Hello, I'm Jesse Pinwheel, and welcome to the first episode of How to Flash. This is a video series aimed towards people who don't know how to use Flash and teaching them how to use Flash. So, I'm going to start off with the tools because it's a lot easier to use Flash when you know what tools you've got at your disposal. There's a lot of tools and not a lot of time, so I'm going to jump right into it. First tool we have here is the select tool right in this corner. The selection tool, which has the hotkey V. So, if you click on something, it'll select something. If you shift click on something, you can select more things. If you want to deselect, you shift click something that's already been selected and it'll deselect. Next thing that you can do with the selection tool is make rectangular selections. Just like that, so it selects everything in that rectangle. Next thing you can do is move things around after they've been selected. <sighs> Another thing you can do with the selection tool is move vector points around, bend lines, curve lines. Since these are separate objects, because they're separated by this line, you can move these separately. Next tool over here is the sub-selection tool, right here. It'll let you see all the vector points that make up a curve or an object, so you can you can move things around like this, you can move around the curves, you can edit them. Just like this. Edit the curves, make it all pretty, I suppose. This will be more of a graphic design thing more than an animation thing, because it's usually just easier to redraw and it's usually not worth the time of fretting over little curves when you're animating. Next tool here is the free transform tool. It works a lot like the select tool. It's got the same selecting abilities, but you'll see that there's this bounding box with these little squares on the corners and stuff. Main thing that you want to know is that you can resize things using this tool. You can rotate things using this tool. You can, by clicking these little lines instead of the boxes, skew objects. If you click over here, there is a distort tool. You can use that to distort your objects, should you ever want to. There's also this, the envelope tool. So this is kind of like a warp tool of sorts. You can drag around points and warp things around like that. So if you ever really need to do something like this, that's how you do it. Next thing we've got is the gradient transform tool. I will not be talking about gradients in this video. There just is not enough time. All you really know, need to know is that this tool is here and that what it does is it lets you adjust gradients. It lets you move them around. I'll talk more about this when I actually talk about gradients in a later video. Next tool is the line tool right up here. Click and drag to create lines. So that's how you'd expect it to work. If you shift hold click, it'll lock it to one of these angles right here, so one of these eight angles. So you can make straight lines that way. If you want to make it thicker or you want to give it different properties, like you want to make it a dotted line, you can use this. You can change the size, just say change it down to three, create a dotted line. If you don't like how this looks, you can change it, change the like spacing between or change how large it is by going to the custom down there. Next tool we've got here is the lasso tool. Works how the lasso tool works in just about any other program. It is a freeform selection tool. There's also another mode here called polygon mode. You click to set the endpoints so you can click around like this. It'll help you with these little nooks right here. And you double click to finish off the to finish it up. You can also drag it when you're in lassoing tool. You can also shift click when you're in the lasso tool. So you can select more than one thing. How convenient. Next tool is the pen tool. You probably will not be using the pen tool, but if you do, this is sort of how it works. It lets you draw using vectors. So if you want to create something that's made completely out of straight lines, you can click to set a vector point, click again to make another vector point that creates a line. So you just keep doing that, and then you click back on the first one to close it. If you want to create curves, you can click once to place a point. You click again and drag in order to create a curve. 
So you can create a lot of different curves like this. You can create smooth shapes in this way. Thing is, if you want to be using this sort of thing, uh, you're definitely going to have to go more in depth with it. You're going to have to experiment with it more than I do because I never use this because it's a lot easier to use other drawing tools like the pencil or the brush. So moving on, the text tool right here, it creates a text box wherever you click, which is pretty much what you would expect. This is a text tool. As you can see, there's a circle right here, so if I keep typing, it's going to keep expanding. If I drag this out, this will turn into a square. That means that the text box is word wrapping. Or whatever that term is. If you want to change the if you want to change the properties of the text, you can go down here to your properties bar again. Change it from bold, change it to ch change the alignment, change the anti-alias, change the font, change the spacing or the size. You can do all that. You're going to see this over here if you're wondering what it is. Static text, dynamic text, input text. You'll be using static text because dynamic text and input text are for action script. That's the code that they use in Flash movies. So you won't be using these. These are for coding, these are for games, these are for interactive movies. So for now you probably will not need to worry about that. Oval tool creates an oval. If you click and you drag, creates an oval. If you hold shift while you click and drag, it'll create a circle. So that's pretty simple. Next tool we've got here is the rectangle tool. So, click and drag creates a rectangle, hold shift, click and drag creates a square. If you go here, you can edit the corner radius, so if I wanted to say make it like 10 points, makes a little rounded off sort of, sort of thing. So next we've got the polystar tool, it's, you probably will not need to use this, but in case you do, it's right under here, under the rectangle. You can tell it's there because there's this little arrow down here showing that there's more showing that there are more points there, there was more tools. So if you click and drag, it'll create a star or a, or a polygon. You can go to the options to change what kind of thing you want. If you want to say a pentagon, you can click that. It creates a pentagon. So, it's pretty simple. Next tool is the pencil tool. Pencil tool is a way to draw using lines. Like once again, you can edit the line properties down here. So if you want to make it thicker, say size 10. You can go down there. If you want to make it raggedy looking, you can do that. It's not a very good way to show that. So that's what that does. Also, you're going to notice these little smoothing options here. Straighten tries to make it look more straight. This is not helping me prove my point here. Well, I mean, what it's supposed to do is try and straighten things out. Smooth is supposed to try and make curves look smooth. Ink is supposed to look a bit more like what you actually draw, so it won't be doing a lot of that editing, removing sort of, removing vector sort of thing. Next tool is the brush tool right here. Uh, you'll notice that the cross there's a crosshair with a circle around it. That means that I've got pressure sensitivity on. Pressure sensitivity is an option that will only come up if you are using a tablet or you have a tablet connected. So. It means that if it's if you're applying less pressure, it's smaller. If you're applying a lot of pressure, it's larger. Tilt, I don't know what tilt does. If you have a tablet that has tilt, you know what it does. So here you can change the size. Here you can change the shape of your brush. I should probably turn this off so it'll look like this. Just a note, Flash 8 does have larger brush sizes than in later versions. So just putting that out there. Next is the ink bottle tool. Uh, this creates an outline on the edge of a fill that you click. So if you want to put an outline on this, just click on the edge. There you go, you've got an outline. Once again, you can edit line properties down there. Next thing we've got up here is the paint bucket tool. Paint bucket tool does what you would expect a paint bucket to do. It fills things in. Just like that. These are separate shapes because they're separated by a line. Even though there's no fill in here, you can fill it in because it's closed off. 
You might think that you can click right here and that'll fill in right here with the corner of the canvas, but it won't because that's not considered a closed shape. In order to fill this in, you need to close the shape off like this. By using the brush tool or by using the pencil tool, you just need to close the shape off in order to fill it in. Another thing that they have here is you'll notice it has a little gap size. With the paint bucket tool, it doesn't have to be completely closed in order to fill it in. So you see this is open, but it filled it in anyways. You'll notice something else though, is that this, is con this gap is considered too large in order to be filled. If you zoom out, it'll fill up just fine. So, just a little note there. So if it's not working like that, you can just zoom out and maybe it'll work then. Next tool is actually the eyedropper tool. There's no slide for it because you will never ever be using the eyedropper tool. The reason why is because if you click on the colors, it gives you an eyedropper. There's literally no reason to ever use the eyedropper tool that's provided there. So anyways, the eraser tool. The eraser tool has an option here that's called faucet. Basically, if you don't want to select and delete something, you can just use the faucet tool, it'll just get rid of the shape. So, there's also these other options here, so erase normal, that'll just erase things normally. Erase fills, that'll only erase fills, but it won't erase lines. Erase lines will erase lines, but not fills. Erase selected fills will only erase fills that have been selected, so if you click on something, it'll have this little checker boxy thingy so then you can select it. If I do this, I could erase all over the screen, but it'll only erase in here because that's what was selected. You can also do an erase inside. It'll only erase on the first thing that you click on. It's a bit finicky though, I don't like it. You can also change the size and the shape right there. So, just a note there. Next thing, zoom tool. Not really a, not really a drawing tool of any sort, but you know, you can zoom in you can zoom out. You can also adjust the zoom from up here, just as a note. And there's also this, which is the hand tool, which you just use to pan around. There's some extra tools in Flash CS4, which I'll be going over right now. First thing, though, is that you'll notice that some of these have been grouped together, like the Free Transform and Gradient Transform, or the Paint Bucket and the Ink Bottle. Those have been grouped together because there's a lot more tools so they put them together in order to make it a little make it a little space efficient. So the first thing we're going to be talking about here is the primitive rectangle and oval tool. These are both under here, under with the rectangle, the ovals, the rectangles, the ovals, the polystar. So yeah. What you can do with these is even after it's created, you can make these little beveled corners or you can edit these properties like this. So you can create an inner radius if you want to. You can create it, make a little wedge. So yeah. Spray brush, it's right here. It's under the paint brush. So you click and you drag and you go down to the paint, the spray brush, and it'll make a spray brush. There's a lot of options over here on the properties bar. So the random scaling makes it so that all the... When it's on, it makes it so that the dots are different sizes. The brush size, that's the brush size. It's not too complicated there. The deco tool, which is right here, it has the it has the shortcut U because I forgot to write that in. So you can fill in a fill with something like this, so with the designs, with the vines or with grids. There's more designs in different um in different versions. I believe in CS5 there's a lot more things you can use the deco tool for. So those are the tools that I want to talk about for this video. Thank you so much for watching and please tune in again next time.